Welcome to this TBC video tutorial where we want to show you how to process DJI Phantom 4 RTK data which is already post-processed uh, for the orientation. So we will not use the baseline processing here in TBC and therefore we will then import our data into TBC because then we can run everything on the TBC coordinate system database and then we will send the data to US master because then we can do all the fine tuning for standard deviation settings. We can then define how accurate in this case here our positions are, how to handle the camera calibration, in case also adding um, manual type on so you have all the package in US master but of course then having all the package means also complexity and therefore that's why we still leave all these processing parts here on the US master side to keep it simple and straight in TBC and then we will after we process everything in US master bring back the data to TBC. So let's start we will create a new project And then we can import our drone images through the photogrammetry tab and import DJI UAV data. And we can then import our data to this project. In this example, we do not have any Rhinex data or MR um, timestamp file or T02 file. So everything here that we read in is the EXIF header information and for the DGI um, images also the XMP tags that are included in the drone data. And here we can then grab the orientation. In this video we will run the whole process just purely based on this RTK data. But of course we want to showcase how ground control points can have an influence and also that we see how well that sometimes fits to each other so the uh, RTK um, orientation values and also the ground control points and therefore we will here drag and drop our ground control point file just to visualize how well they fit to each other. We can just double click it and see and here in our points and then we see that the preposition here already, of course, we don't have type points, but just that we are aware, they are now not perfectly fitting. So we have here our distance. And normally you could also measure the ground control points, but we will now just use this data as it is. Uh, let's show the other ones here. There's control point four here. And then there's here control point five. And we will not measure them. We want just to see how well they fit. And then in US Master, we can then afterwards measure one additional one. And then we can make a global shift, which is also possible in US Master. But in our case, we will just take the data as it is and send the data to US Master. So here we go. Say send. We will send here also additionally the three ground control points and then say OK. And we will run this here in this TBC coordinate system. And this is the nice thing. So this coordinate system will be transferred to US master and we will use the uh, identical database from TBC in US master. I'm running here on the newest version 11.0. Uh, if you are running it on 10.1.5, this is also fine. And we will just send this now to US master. I will give a project name, define it as an area mapping project type, say OK. And then we have here now our images and our ground control points imported to US master. When we go to the project editing, we can see here that the coordinate system is already transferred. When we go to the images, we can see in the images the orientations which are already here in the GDA 94 zone 50. 
And also when we go uh, to the GNSS, then these values are already here existing. Now what we need to do is to change our standard deviations for our RTK, because we assume we have here high precise RTK. And um, in our case, we have here an XMP flag called 50, which means this was a successful post-processed um, baseline processing for the RTK data. And therefore we can here set our stand deviations uh, more accurate. And we typically set this to five centimeter for the GNSS. Um, but this is of course now again, depending from your trajectories, how close your base um, um, your reference station was to your project, how good the satellites were found. And this is now something where also these protocols from your baseline processing would help you to identify about the quality of your GNSS um, and also if you lost signal or not. So there are so many parameters. So just be aware what you enter if you have the quality or not. In my case here, I set this here to five centimeters and I don't care about the IMU because I don't have a high precision IMU and I will not use it. And then we can define all our GNSS parts to five centimeter. You could even here make a few images deactivated if you have perhaps sometimes a signal loss or some images do not have the accuracy. And again, this would be part of the um, post-processing of your baseline process and then you would see here perhaps some offshots for some images. In our case, five centimeter and we will run our whole data here purely based on this RTK data. Of course, we can run many, many tests now here already in the project setup, mainly because in the project setup, many errors happen. Yeah, so therefore we could already check here, does the terrain height and the flying height make sense here? If not, we can calculate a new terrain height. We can run here the strip definitions and generate them automatically, compare then afterwards the kappa value of our photos with the kappa value coming from our um, drone images and then see if the orientation and rotation of the photos make sense. We can here, as I already have shown before, see if the ground control points are correctly pre-positioned. So of course, US Master offers now a large variety of check tools, but of course also complexity. So therefore, I will always try to mention what you can do additionally in US Master, but I will not run them in detail and explain everything in detail, just but at least to give you the glimpse how much you can here evaluate quality and assure the quality for our processing. But in our case, we will then try still to stick with the standard settings. So we will here first go to the georeferencing part. In the georeferencing part, um, a major control part is do the images fit to each other from the orientation and rotation. It's not mandatory because the time point extraction is a very flexible tool and therefore we can fix this here, but it makes help. It helps us for our general processing. So you could run, for example, in the top of view and in the top of view, we have then the option to activate our photos and see them here when they overlap uh, correctly to each other between the strips. So is this image here here the, le the lower part of this part here and you can do the same thing also with the ground control points they should normally when you double click them be pre-positioned somewhere at least where the ground control point is if this is let's say 100 meters away or something then of course um, we have already an indication something is wrong but we see already the pre-position is somewhere close to the real uh, position that we uh, we will uh, need and therefore we can here do some pre-checks about the initialization we call it here um, after this is done if you use the us master tools to do this um, then we can be pretty sure that when we run the 3d reconstruction uh, that we can get 
a very good type 1 distribution over the project. Here already we have in our reconstruction um, estimated camera model, which helps us that we can get for the lens distortions the good tie point distribution. And here you have a little bit more flexibility. You can now define if you want to do it with a decentric or not decentric uh, camera part. You can optimize image radiometry. You can here d use different type and extraction algorithms and, uh, and methods. Um, again, it gives us more flexibility to get different data sets better but it makes it more complex. Um, I will here run just the default setting because this is very similar like what we have in TBC and which is for most of our data sets sufficient. But again, just to be aware here, we have also the options to run here more different parameters to achieve a successful process run. After the type 1 extraction or the 3D reconstruction is done, then again, uh, US Master offers you a large variety of tools to check how good these type points uh, are connecting these photos. There are a huge amount of options here in the, um, in the properties. We can here uh, show, for example, for photos, the standard deviations, uh, we can show them also for uh, the joints, how do the photos link to each other, how do the um, photos itself to the neighborhood connect. So there are many graphical check tools helping us to evaluate the quality of the tie points. If you have very large blocks, then also we have binning cells allowing us here for each binning cell a statistic which helps us again to evaluate the quality about connectivity but also about the potential of how good normally an area should connect. So there are many checking tools that we can offer here. When we go back to the processing, so the 3D reconstruction is really the main goal to connect the photos to each other. We still calibrated here already the camera that we can run this type on extraction with a high quality, but still we would still need now to do run our final orientation, which is then this part. In the measure part, we would measure the ground control points. And also what you can do is measure here single tie points. Now, it sounds perhaps crazy, but let's say there's an area where you have a very low texture and you still need somehow to connect these photos there, then you could manually measure tie points. Each tie point still becomes a tie point center. So you could, if you already in before know, this will be a difficult area, measure these tie points in before, then run the 3D reconstruction, then this tie point will become a tie point center. And so you can here uh, stabilize the block for difficult parts and uh, handle here also very complex parts. Now what we want is to run the orientation. And of course, in our case, we are basing everything on the GNSS. So we will use our GNSS. And also because now we have these five centimeter accurate GNSS in this project, we will run again a camera calibration. Uh, the previous camera calibration is here a prox, an approx uh, solution which is already very good. So you could even consider not to use it, but we want really to fine tune the camera. So we will run now here with the five centimeter GNSS, this camera calibration and giving from our overlap from the photos, we have a very good constellation. So we can here make the camera calibration even more accurate. And we will also here define the different distortions. And again, here now the complexity of US Master comes into the goal or into, into to shining. We can here define how many coefficients from K1 to K7 we want to use, uh, how many decentering coefficients we want to calculate or if we want at all to calculate them. And afterwards also, if we would measure a single ground control point, we could even apply a global shift, uh, which we will then showcase here uh, how this has an impact to our processing. Uh, 
So let's start here again with the default settings. We will now base everything on these 5 cm GNSS and run a camera calibration um, and the distortion. And of course, also what is part here is an adjustment. So we will here give the photos orientations, X, Y, Z, Omega, Phi, Kappa values for each single one of our project. Here we go. The orientation is done. We can take a look here at the report. In the report file, we can then see here again some graphical statistics and also some number statistics. So for us, all 85 images are orientated. Um, all images have an, a valid uh, adjustment and orientation. We have the type on distribution. And this is uh, all part for me. What I want to go here is showing in our um, parameters for the camera. So we have a camera calibration applied to our project. We can see in the camera calibration uh, the quality, how well we were able to um, determine the, the centric and decentric distortions. Then we can continue see here about how accurate our uh, sensor was uh, calibrated, if there are some systematics still in the sensor existing. And then going a little bit more deeper into our block adjustment. So here we can see that our GNSS was applied with five centimeter. Um, we see that the tie point um, uh, extraction for the photo measurements itself is defined here with the image standard deviation automatic with two micrometers. And when we go into our results, then we can see here how well our um, measurement was uh, done. So in our GNSS, we can reach these five centimeters. We keep them up. Uh, also the translations, how well we define the exterior orientations is also, of course, because everything is referenced to our uh, GNSS is here very accurate and on the ground we reach uh, in, in position here about three centimeter and in height only 30 centimeter because we don't have here for the focal length determination any ground control point and it's a very flat area. If there would be more undulation in our ground then again uh, the height accuracy would increase um, because then we have better cutting parts. But um, important for us is that we can now run the whole process based on our GNSS. When we look here at uh, the residuals of the GNSS, then we can see some systematics that exist in the data. So therefore, it would be also helpful for us here if we would measure, for example, one ground control point and to see if we can apply a, a global shift to it. But let's take a look at the ground control points directly without that we measured them. So when we go here and take a look just at the GCPs, then we can see here that they are having a global shift. So there's not perfectly fitting on uh, the ground control point itself. So they all have uh, a systematic offshot here. When we go to the next one here, to the control point number four, you can see exactly the same part. Everything is here having a global shift here to uh, the south. And this can happen um, depending in this case here how you define your coordinate system from your ground control points and how you were running your uh, GNSS processing. Um, in case this happens, then you can again use in US Master here the option that you here apply a global shift. So what we will do is we will just measure here one ground control point and then when we measure the ground control point I will use here ground control point 2 because it has I think the largest potential to being here uh, in most of these strips and therefore we will just here measure it and then when we after we measured it we can then apply here our orientation with a global shift. I only measure two of them, then I right click here and then I say complete and refine. 
and uh, then we can see here that the remaining measurements were most of them automatically done. You see here not, but this is of course clear, it's blurred, and therefore I won't use this one here. Here I can decide if I want to manually remeasure this one here and add this one here. Then we can go back to the orientation, and in this time we will here run now also again the orientation based on the GNSS, but we will here compute a global shift. Before I do this, I will here just say cancel exit here because again US Master offers you many more options and one of them is to define how accurate is my ground control point measured. So I can define here my stand deviations for my ground control point. Typically I would say this is something around we set three centimeter in position and let's say here two times sigma I will use here six centimeters and not 30 um, and then we will here use this ground control point with three and six um, for the measurement in the photo itself, uh, two micrometers is because we were running the matching here on um, the first pyramid level. I will put it here on three micrometers. And the manual measurements here, again, also with two micrometers or three. So I say, okay, again, this is again something where you would then, we would need to train and, and understand what, how do I get these values? How do they make sense? Uh, how do they relate to each other? So how much impact does the ground control point has to my GNSS? And um, how this in the adjustment will have an effect to each other? And of course, this makes it more flexible. We have more possibilities, but of course, also more complex. And therefore, that's why we still have this um, parameters in US Master and not in TPC, just to put all these advanced tools and these complexities into the US Master tool. And in TPC, we can still run most of the projects uh, with the standard settings. So therefore, this should not have here an influence in a bad way for us. Let's go to the orientation. We will run now here, compute with a global shift, because when you run a global shift, you cannot do any more a camera calibration, which is not a problem for us because we already calibrated the camera in the first run. Uh, so I will save here the setting. You, of course, you can make here a new strategy just for this part. And then we will run the um, whole orientation now based here on the one control point and with the GNSS. And afterwards, then we can take a look again how good are now my ground control points pre-positioned, the remaining two, for example, and um, also how good are our reports for our GNSS, for our terrain accuracy, and also for our translations. And that's what we will do now. So we will take a look first at the report and I will just jump directly here to the log adjustment settings. So here we can now see I changed my image stand deviations, how accurate my tie points are. I changed here for my ground control points to three centimeter in position and six in height. And then when we go here to our result, then we can now see here uh, that in our terrain from the 30 centimeters, we move down to the nine centimeters or 10 including now our ground control point positional wise, we have here four to five centimeters. And now we can now, we could now start fine tuning. We could now go back, change our stand deviations for the GNSS, make it perhaps more accurate, uh, giving the ground control point also more accuracy, trying to tighten up this whole thing or to give a little more uh, freedom. This is where the adjustment now starts to be an iterative process and where we can try really to find out our best position. Of course, one thing I didn't do, which would be a major impact, would be not running on medium, uh, our um, 3D reconstruction, but running at high. So then we would already have here a higher accuracy in our tie points. And then um, we can also here reach uh, better accuracies than also for our position of the ground control point and also on the ground, our tie points itself will have a better absolute orientation value. Second thing is now 
taking a look here on our ground control points. And when we now here, of course, uh, would be bad if this would not fit, uh, because this one is the one that we measured. And of course, we see that here the blue cross, let me zoom in here, uh, the white triangle and the yellow triangle are all in the same place almost. Now we see it's not perfect, but almost, and which is exactly what we want. And then when we take a look at the remaining ones, they should then also again be within here our accuracies of five centimeter. So, and we can still see here, because we did everything just with one ground control point, there is still a slight uh, change here uh, where we don't have it perfect, pitch perfect. And then we could now consider, okay, if we add a second or third ground control point, this will then be fitting better to our real ground control point coordinate system because there was a difference between the GNSS and our ground control point. Um, of course, some projects, they will already fit very well uh, even without any ground control point. So I just wanted to showcase here in the data that this is possible here to also offer here a global shift correction. So after we have done our georeferencing, then we can now here just uh, go into the surface and auto generation. After we created here uh, either our terrain models or surface model, then uh, here either using um, the feature-based matching or cost-based matching or SGM process. Um, you can also here generate a true autophoto or a classic autophoto afterwards in the autophoto part. Then we can just simply um, go back to uh, our TBC project by sending this project with the point cloud, with the autophoto. Um, and also if you can, you can also use stereo measurement in US Master, you can measure 3D vector data with um, a stereo screen where you can measure accurate uh, feature um, measurement or, uh, data, streets, whatever you need to do for cartographic issues or any graphic um, vector data that you want to survey. And then you send this back to TBC and it will then be loaded back into your TBC project where we started from. If you close this, because this was done over several days, then you just reopen this project and then we will then import this results into your TBC project. So just to showcase, I will here make a fast forward video showing how I will here just simply create um, a feature based matching model and generate um, classic auto photos and then send them back into our TBC project. So here we go, we imported the results from US Master to TBC. The autophoto is here imported and uh, we see here this is already um, merged as a mosaic. And then we also have our point cloud, which is here this feature based matching. If we take here a look at the 3D view then we can see this point cloud here also with our terrain content. And therefore here, this, uh, true auto, uh, this auto photo is based on this point cloud. And we can now run all TBC functionality from here on. We can generate our terrain model. We can hear um, uh, volume calculations, contour line generation, and uh, of course also digitize here our data. I hope this gives you an idea how to also run your DJI Phantom 4 RTK data directly without ground control points. 
and also how they have an impact to each other. If you add a ground control point, also how this increases the quality of your height uh, because then you have um, a reference on both sides on the ground but also in the air from your GNSS and uh, um, um, therefore you can run on different processing types your RTK Phantom 4 data. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day. Goodbye.